Hello student, welcome to today's session. So today we will be discussing very important topic in regard to the topic of metal carbonyls and that too it's an effective atomic number. So metal carbonyls is a very uh, detailed topic from the chapter of coordination chemistry. Here I am specifically taking up the effective atomic number regard to the metal carbonyls and some structures of metal carbonyls which are important for JE mains advanced and neat examination. Since one week, I am getting lot of lot of queries from your side uh, in regard to different topics. Uh, uh, since the time I have started placing my videos more religiously and more uh, consistently onto the YouTube, so I am feeling so delighted addressing all your queries in in some way or the other. And uh, I am trying to uh, consolidate all the doubts and then place a holistic approach to that particular topic. So here today we will be discussing. Uh, effective atomic number related to the metal carbonyls. The questions which I received were very interesting. So first question is uh, something in, in, and in and around the effective atomic number of these metal carbonyls is being asked. In the other question, it's a single integer type question where x and y is being asked for these two metal carbonyls for these formulas. And the other one, it also was a very important question where uh, something in regard to the terminal CO and uh, bridged CO is being asked along with the reducing and oxidizing agent for these metal carbonyl compounds. And lastly, this, this question sent by some guy was a very, very important question where more than one question, one choice question is being asked for this particular uh, uh, metal carbonyls in regard to the structure. And this is also a very important one. So let us discuss all of these questions before I go into the discussion of these questions as we are doing. Uh, these are the problems. Now we have to address through a bit of theory. Let me place it in front of you. So when I talk of metal carbonyls, metal carbonyls are the compounds where the metal is in a very low oxidation state. Generally, it is in a zero oxidation state when the metal carbonyl do not contain any charge. Otherwise, it is having a very low oxidation state. Second thing which is very important from the bonding aspect is that metal carbonyls are having a, can be said as pi acid ligand. So they involve a special type of a bonding which we call it as synergic bonding. Metal uh, uh, carbon monoxide uh, being a, having a lone pair happens to do the coordinate bond with the metal. Metal is having vacant d orbital and since the metal is having also filled d orbital happened because of the pairing done because of the strong field ligand nature of carbon monoxide. So the metal gives back electron density into the pi star molecular orbital of carbon monoxide. So the, in, in this regard, I will be placing one more video in regard to the metal carbonyls. Otherwise, uh, the metal carbonyls are simply being uh, generally being formed by treating the metal uh, transition metal with the carbon monoxide gas at a high temperature and high pressure. When this is being done, generally they happens to give you uh, um, metal carbonyls, which generally would, would be in the zero oxidation state or in the lower oxidation state. But here we would not be discussing the bonding aspect. The bonding aspect would take a good amount of time. I just have given you a glimpse of that. We will be placing one question on that also, one video on that also. I have already got uh, many questions in regard to the bond strength and bond length of CO in the metal carbonyls that I will place in the some other day in some other video. So here we will be specifically first taking up the discussion in terms of the effective atomic number. So effective atomic number in journal is the total number of electrons which we would get around the central atom once the central atom happens to do the complex formation. Once the complex formation has happened then we just would want to count out the number of electrons of the central metal atom. And generally we would find that the central metal atom generally tend to acquire the noble gas atomic number. So it may or may not take noble gas configuration, but generally we will be saying most of the coordination complexes tend to acquire that one. So here, what is the rule of the game? Simply you have to write the at atomic number of the central metal atom minus its oxidation state, minus its oxidation state plus two into the coordination number. So this is a simple way. Z is the atomic number. Oxidation state is to be subtracted plus 2 into the coordination number. Just like if in case I do in this first question. So here iron is in plus 2 oxidation state. How do I get it? That X plus uh, Cn is 6 in number. But Cn is carrying minus 1 oxidation state is equal to minus 4. So X happens to come out to be plus 2. So the oxidation state. So if I would write Z for iron is 26 minus 2 
and plus 2 into what is the coordination number because CN is a monodentate ligand so it is having a coordination number of 6 so it is to be uh, multiplied by 6 you happen to get 36 and 36 is a noble gas configuration pertaining to krypton so krypton is having an atomic number 36 so this complex around iron you have 36 electrons which in a way make it a, a, a stable one because it, it has just acquired a noble gas configuration type of a thing similarly if i would go for the nickel metal carbonyls this nickel is having atomic number 28 oxidation state of this is zero because carbon monoxide is a neutral ligand and plus 2 into 4 so here also you happen to get the atomic number as 36 only so this is one of the way to find the effective atomic number now the other way for the metal carbonyl specially you can do it like this also the way i am showing it to you a simple trick but uh, you can apply in in the typical cases this x is the number of number of metal atoms in the complex and m you can say as to be the atomic number atomic number of metal and l is the carbon monoxide number of carbon monoxide number of carbon monoxide so this is the simple formula which you should apply in the case of typical cases just like in this case if i would do it the chromium's atomic number is 24 that is the m and how many chromium atoms i do have here is one is it okay and carbon monoxide 2 into l l is the number of carbon monoxide so carbon monoxides are six so this x already we have said x is number of central metal atom or chromium atoms so here also you happen to get the answer as 36 let me do one more for you just like if i would write feco9 if this is the complex so how many iron atoms do i have two and iron is 26 iron is 26 plus and two into how many carbon monoxide do i have it is having nine to the 18 divided by 2 again because x is 2 this 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 value of here i am saying this has to be x plus 2 minus 1 so if you would calculate it out this also would again turn about to be 36 so this is one way of identifying the effective atomic number for a metal carbonyls apart from the already defined formula just like in the first question the question which we have received here in the question what is being asked is effective atomic number of a metal atom not equal to they are asking in which of these it is not equal to the atomic number of a noble gas it is not equal to the atomic number of a noble gas let let me check it out so let us apply that formula because we don't know the structure as yet so um, here what we can do the same formula we can apply here the formula is uh, x is the number of atoms that is 2 in this case atomic number of cobalt is 27 it is 27 very clear so l is the number of ligands that is co they are 8 in number and this again is a x is 2 here also the x is 2 uh, if you just to do its calculation you happen to get answer as 36 so simple this we have already done few minutes back we already have done this so this again is having a noble gas this also again is having a noble gas what had been the next one so if i would go for this this particular complex we will be using this in the next form next problem also so vanadium's atomic number is 23 x in this case if you would see x is 1 so i just have placed 1 and the carbon monoxide are how many in number these are 6 in number into 2 so 1 minus 1 so this happens to come out to be 35 so here this shall be our answer let me check for this this we have already done that is 36 so in the first uh, question discussion so we find the answer is this one where the effective atomic number of the sentimental atom atom is not equal to the noble gas this is one way of addressing the question now let me let me explain something other than effective atomic number in in terms of your uh, in terms of your structures which is again very very important to address here with so as regard to the metal carbonyls what you would also find that metal carbonyls the classification of metal carbonyls of is of two types where one is the uh, when you talk of uh, 
a uh, number of metal atoms in the metal carbonyls one is that one classification is that second is when you talk about the structure of the carbonyl group because the carbon monoxide may act as a terminal ligand may act as a bridge ligand or in the metal carbonyls you may also get the metal metal bond so this these two classifications are there which we want to address here in this chapter because once you are clear with this you would feel little strengthened with that if in something in and around the structure of the com complex is being asked you are able to do it when you talk of a mononuclear compound just like nacl4 feco5 these are more where the number of metal atoms are one this is just like crco6 and polynuclear can be we just have done few questions just like this one or cobalt 2 co8 or fe3 co12 so what my suggestion to all of you is whatever i am placing here in terms of the structures or in terms of the important metal carbonyl complexes just remember their structure as such because if you would remember that structure not going into the discussion in regard to the bonding how these structures are being made we shall be doing it in some other video but here what my suggestion is those who are preparing for je bns neat and advanced examination just remember these these as direct structure there are seven eight compounds only which you can remember very easily as well so on the basis of uh, uh, classification based on the carbonyl group one is when you talk of carbon monoxide behaving like a terminal terminal ligand terminal ligand means that when co is giving its electron density directly to the metal from one side uh that is what you call it as a non bridged carbonyl group or terminal ligand then there could be a case where terminal ligand is already there it is giving the terminal ligand but metal metal bond is also present in the metal carbonyls this is one case and the third case is very very important where bridged carbonyl is also along with so bridged bridged carbonyl in what sense it is bridged carbonyl uh, i shall be saying it in in the way uh just like if i would show you if i would show you just hold on for a while so just like if i would show you here there is co co it is joining it like this carbon monoxide is joining to this metal as well as this metal so this is a just like what you call that as a carbonyl group in the organic chemistry so co is joining this side as well this side as well with the metal so that is the bridged carbonyl and terminal co is also there and mm bond is there so hardly you would find few cases this we have already done feco5 like or um, nico4 or cocco crco6 these are some of the examples of where you just would have uh, terminal ligands another one which you can place it here is cobalt co8 where you would also along with that you would also get there is terminal co along with that you would have metal metal bond and this would have two different type of a structure in solution aqueous solution and in solid state so this is the information to be retained so whatever information i am passing it is more than sufficient to crack iid at once so make it a point so this is more than sufficient one is fe3co12 this is also very important case and this would have a iso structural with osmium 3co12 because if you would remember fe fe ruthenium and osmium are from the same group so the whatever structure you would get for this one same is with this one and the last one which you also always have to remember is uh, the case of fe co9 where you would find bridged co also and terminal co as well as mm metal metal bond also and one is cobalt co8 and here in this way it is in solid state here it is in the aqueous state here it is in the aqueous state so i shall be doing uh, i shall be removing it from here and would say that when you talk of this here it is in the aqueous solution so uh, the complex of uh, cobalt with the carbon monoxide has two different uh, structures in aqueous form and in the solid state so let us do this speedily uh one is this nico4 this is tetrahedral complex this is a tetrahedral complex and if in case you just don't want to do any sort of uh, formula uh, don't want to use any formula you can do the effective atomic number from the structure itself because 
here the nickel is in 28 plus these are the two two electrons which are being given by the metal carbonyl so two into four so this comes out to be 36 so this also is a very interesting one if you know the structure then it is again very easy to evaluate the total number of electrons around the central atom next is feco5 feco5 is this trigonal bipyramidal and the bond bonding aspect of all these would be take up ten, taken up in some other video so here also if you would see this is 26 uh, 26 plus uh, these are 5 in number 5 into 2 so it, this again come out to be 36 similarly this is a octahedral complex which you should know octahedral complex something like this this is a octahedral complex for which again you would get 24 plus 2 into 6 that is again 36 because chromium's atomic number is 24 again effective atomic number is very clear to us now this is a very interesting case which you should always have to remember for so here i am suggesting you to remember these structures as such so fe fe these are the two fe which are being connected to each other with metal metal bond and along with that what you are able to see here is there are some bridged co groups bridged co groups these are the two bridged co groups and this one also is a bridged co group and along with that what you also would see are some because already three are being used these are the co which are like this now we already have found the effective atomic number for this complex by that formula m xm plus 2l upon x plus x minus 1 from this formula we already have found now if in case you are being given the structure then how to identify the things so the simple thing is you have to calculate very uh, patiently so these two electrons are being sent by the carbon monoxide as a ligand and the one which we are showing with the bridged one so in the case of bridged one this electron is of iron these electrons are of iron atom is it okay and the other one is being uh, given by the uh, uh, carbon monoxide this this and this is the electron which is being given by the other iron metal metal bond and this one so this calculation is to be seen very uh, religiously and very uh, diligently so we have to calculate the total number of electrons around this iron so iron it's in itself is 26 which we know iron is 26 26 plus so these three if you could see these uh, are six electrons these are the six electron which is being given by carbon monoxide as a sigma donation and now what you else are seeing here is that these cross electron which i am marking it with the uh, uh which i should mark it with this these cross electrons are already being counted in this 26 these are already being counted in this 26 now what else we are left with one electron is this one electron is this one electron is this one electron is this so in in totality uh, how many electrons do i have around iron now 26 plus 6 that is 32 and plus 4 which are these four electrons which i have marked with the tick these are the four electrons so this makes it 36 same is the situation here also this also is 36 this is another way to evaluate the uh, effective atomic number from the structure and structure in itself is very important so in this structure what else they can ask you in this structure you have a iron iron bond one this is one fe fe bond and you also would see there are six terminal co which can be asked in the paper terminal co terminal co and along with that what you are also seeing here is there is three bridged co so this in a way is a important important structure so this i wanted to share it with you so effective atomic number from the formula we have already evaluated for this again it was 36 but now if i if i have to draw its structure its structure is somewhat like this so these are the three fe fe bonds which are there in in this case and along with how many uh, carbon monoxide i have to play with it is four carbon monoxide so uh, in some books uh, this structure is little debatable but anyhow we can address at this moment with this viewpoint so 
this is the structure which we receive for Fe3CO12. Here in this case, again, you have to do the calculation of the electrons. So this iron, if I would write, is having 26 electrons and around the 26 electron, what else you are seeing? You are seeing these electrons, which I'm marking it with the pink marker. These are eight in number, two into four, that is eight plus. Other than that, what you are also seeing here is these electrons, which I am marking it now, are the iron's electron, which are already there in the 26. Already there in the 26. And these electrons, which I am using as cross, is the other iron atom. So around iron, there are 26 electrons. And out of those 26 electrons, these two electrons are already taken care of in the 26 itself. So these are the two electrons. Other than that, you have to also consider for. So this is 2. So 26 plus 2, uh, 26 plus 8 is, uh, isn't it? So this again, effective atomic number happens to come out to be 36. So this is again a atomic number, effective atomic number 36. But in context of structure, it had been a, uh, I would say, a important case. One more important case is of this, manganese. So here, manganese, manganese is having one bond as a metal-metal bond, and this is trigonal uh, pyramidal type of a case, something like this. So you have with you, uh, uh, these are four in number. I just have missed one. So one more. So this is one, two, three, four, five, and here also you have five. So this also is a important one. Now, if I have to calculate it out, so this manganese is having how many electrons? Manganese is uh, 25 plus uh, all of these electrons are being given by this one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So these are 2 into 5, that is 10. So this in a way becomes 35. And this electron, which is already there in 25, but this electron extra, which they are sharing it with another manganese, is also to be added. So this again becomes a 36. I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that you are understanding what I'm trying to say. So this again is a very important information, which you always have to keep it in mind that this particular complex has two different type of structures in solution and in aqua state. In solution, it exists as... In solution, it exists as cobalt, cobalt one bond and around it, there are terminal CO groups, which are four in number. Terminal CO groups, terminal CO groups, which are four in number. This is in the aqua solution, but in the uh, solid state, in solid state, in solid state, it do have a structure where metal, metal, carbon, uh, metal metal bond is still there, but along with it, you would also find to bridge the CO. Now, how this conversion has happened at this moment, I would not be explaining it, but it's an important discussion which I will be placing in some other video. But if you would calculate around it, you would get the same number of just let me do it speedily for you. So, uh, this cobalt is 27, 27 plus uh, six electrons which is being given by these CO which are which are acting as a uh, terminal CO and the bridged one is this electron this electron this electron is of cobalt which is already there in 27 so we have to place how many electrons one two three these three are to be added extra so 27 plus 9 makes it 36 so the answer to this is 36 same is the case here so this is 27 plus how many carbon monoxide we have? Eight. Uh, eight electrons which we get from the four terminal CO groups. And this electron is already there in the 27. This electron extra which we, of the sharing with the other cobalt is to be added. That makes a... So 9 plus 27 again would make it 36. So all of these structures, how many structures these have? These are two in number. This is two structured. One is this. Uh, 2, 3, 4, uh, this is the 5. These 5 structure, at least you should remember. These are the important one. And for this again, if it is osmium, 
cobalt 12 this would have the same one same is with the ruthenium cobalt uh, 12 and because they are from the same group fe3co12 so these would have the same structures so this always you have to remember so now let us do some questions based on it now let us do it speedily which of the following metal carbonyls is uh, in in regard to the metal carbonyl is correct so if in case you know the structure then it is very easy to remember so we just have done that mnco10 did not have any bridged co so they said they has no bridged co so this in a way is a correct statement if the first option is correct then we need not to check the other one but still we will check it now another one is fe3co12 has three bridged co this had been wrong one because here we did not find any bridged co it all the co which are 444 four, four on each iron are the terminal one so this again is a wrong statement and these two are very interesting viewpoints so when you talk of vanadium co6 vanadium co6 now if i would find its effective atomic number how does how much i would get about it so vanadium is 23 plus 6 into 12 6 in oh, sorry 6 into 2 so 12 plus 23 is 35 so vanadium and that for this one if i would write how much is uh, mnco6 if i would write it effective atomic number for this one so this would be magnesium is 25 plus uh, 6 into 2 so this in a way becomes uh, 37 so obviously this would want to lose one electron mnco6 always would want to change into mnco6 plus by losing one electron so that it could have a configuration of 36 noble gas configuration so this would always would want to act as a reducing agent rather than oxidizing agent so this in a way is a wrong statement and similarly from the same viewpoint we will be saying vanadium co6 would always be wanting to receive one electron so that it could become voco6 negative because if we if we do so because it is having atomic number effective atomic number 35 so this would want to take one electron so that it could become uh, effective atomic number equal to 36 so this would want to act as an oxidizing agent so this in a way is also a wrong statement so the best answer is the a option i hope all of you have got this well now the next one next one had been uh, select the correct statement among the following so this particular question definitely to address this question you need to know the structures so i just would request you to remember all those structures they are more than sufficient for uh, uh, 12th base any examination uh, in the first structure osmium 3 co12 has no bridged co so this in a way is a right statement we already have just done it feco9 has six terminal co groups it is having six terminal co groups let me check let me show it to you it had it had six terminal CO groups. Am I right? Yes, it is having six terminal CO group. Now the question becomes easy once you know the theory aspect. Then it becomes easy. That is the beauty of uh, your inorganic chemistry. If you know some information, then it becomes very interesting. And then the question can be done in a fraction of a second. And CO2, CO8 uh, has different molecular structure in solid and aqueous state. This is a totally information based type of a thing. And lastly, effective atomic number of this is not same as that of chromium in CrO6 this also we have already done this also we have already done in both of these the effective atomic number happens to came out to be 36 only so this means this is a wrong statement so the answer to this question shall be a b c so this again was a important important and important question now we are left still with one more question to address with that is the case of uh, x and y in some problem somewhere so let me show it to you how to address that one so this was the question where uh, if in case we don't know the structure or we are not aware of this if in case some new structure comes in the paper so how to go for it so my suggestion is just to rely first on that uh, formula for the metal carbonyls is xm plus 2l upon x plus x minus 1 now i am here considering the fact that the effective atomic number for neutral metal carbonyl would be the one for that metal would be the one which is next noble gas around it so iron is 26 
up next noble gas which we would receive is 36 so i just have taken it as 36 and placed the formula like the one we have already done so it is 3 in number 3 and uh, 26 is the atomic number of iron and x we want to find out that is the 2 into coordination number type of a thing so x we want to find out so if you just roll down down uh, to find out this so this would come out to be 12 so one way of doing is this one similarly for this uh, the other one you wanted to find out the y same pedagogy i have uh, uh, adopted here again for this is 26 nearest noble gas then can be the 36 if it is a neutral uh, entity and you happen to get this as to be 9. Uh, if in case you also would want to do it in a, some other way, this is another one formula whereby for the metal cardinals you could also find the number of metal metal bond around it. Number of metal metal bond around it. So what is the way to do it is the simple one is uh, what you shall do here is the number of I just would write once again number of metal metal bond can be written as 18n minus total number of valence electron around the central metal atom divided by 2 total number of central metal atom just like in this case if you wanted to find how many fe fe bond are there in this particular complex so 18 now what is this n n is the number of metal atoms in that formula and what is the total number of valence electron total number of valence electron and the total number of valence electrons are the valence electrons of the metal and that of ligand so i just would put the values in this formula so it is 18 into 3 3 is the number of metal atoms that is 3 minus now you have to find the total number of valence electrons so iron is 3d6 4s2 3d6 4s2 so the valence electron here i would consider as to be 8 in this formula so the number of valence electron I considered at 8 into 3 because there are 3 iron atoms and how many uh, carbon monoxide do I have 12 into 2. So if I just would place all these values in this I just have received Fe Fe bond in this formula as to be 3. So let me reiterate what I just have said number of metal metal bond in polynuclear metal carbonyls or I just would write in case of metal carbonyls, metal carbonyls can be found with this formula 18n minus total number of valence electrons around metal atom where you have to consider the valence electron only, valence electron of metal and along with you have to count the electrons being given by the by the carbon monoxide as a ligand. So I hope you have enjoyed today's session and uh, you must have received good information in this discussion. So hope to see you next time with some other topic in some other session. Thanks a lot. Have a nice day. Stay safe. Take good care of yourself. Bye-bye.